In recent weeks, federal regulators have signaled concern about one financial sector in America that could spell economic trouble, commercial real estate. Decreased demand for offices coupled with high interest rates have put some serious pressure on leaseholders and smaller banks in particular. Economics correspondent Paul Salman reports from San Francisco. What some folks consider America's ticking financial time bomb, empty office buildings. Commercial real estate is the big problem uh, across the country, really. Real estate economist Nancy Wallace. And obviously San Francisco, the problems are really significant. Especially in San Francisco, which the New York Times called the most empty downtown in America. How empty are the office buildings? About 33, 35% vacant. Developer Jesse Blatt, compared to what? Natural vacancy rate is 10 to 15%. Which means that the owners. They are literally not paying their mortgages. Bad enough. But there are also another trillion dollars in mortgages that need to be refinanced this year and next. And so... If interest rates don't come down, those mortgages would be nearly impossible to refinance. And so we're going to see another wave of what are called maturity defaults of people being unable to refinance. And that would wipe out the owners, leaving downtown San Francisco and similar cities more hollowed out shades of the great financial crash of 2008. And thus, investor and depositor fears in San Francisco and in the past few weeks all around the country, triggered by losses at New York Community Bank, which announced it will try to reduce its commercial real estate loans. But to some folks, like developer Blout, the current crisis in San Francisco, at least, actually seems like an opportunity. We've never seen prices like this. We started our business at the start of the Great Recession in 2009, 2010, and that was a historic buy buying opportunity. This moment, even more historic. So Blout's firm, Strata, which moved into this 18-story building in 2022, bought it a month ago for a song. Fully 70% uh, discount off of what it was valued just five years ago. Okay, a pricey song, $67 million, still just 30 cents on the dollar. San Francisco is still one of the best cities in the country. It's the center of artificial intelligence. So there's more office jobs in San Francisco than there ever were. So the office is fairly empty here. Yep. And yet I see all that traffic on your bridge. It's picked up quite a bit. We're not unlike most companies in San Francisco these days where we tend to let people work from home from on Mondays and Fridays, and then everybody's here. If you were here tomorrow, it would be, you couldn't find a seat. Some see a building half empty, Blout half full, and betting on a return to work from work, having paid only 30 cents on the dollar, he has money to fill it up. What, what are you gonna do to get them back? <laughs> we're gonna spend some money million bucks just for the window washing equipment. It's all about creating new experiences for the tenants and giving people a reason to come to work. Including a rooftop common area with a view. We're going to upgrade all of the pavings and all the railings and everything and put some beautiful planting, some places to sit. So Blout thinks he's buying at the bottom of the so-called real estate cycle. That is, too little office space means soaring rents, prompting a building boom, finance with debt. Eventually, there's a glut. Your tenants skedaddle, especially this time, thanks to COVID. Your rents can't cover your costs. Then you foreclose or you sell your property at a third of its market value and the cycle starts again. But what happens to those holding the commercial real estate loans? Many of them regional banks without much of a capital cushion. What do they do to keep afloat? A lot of them now are working with their borrowers to not take back the keys uh, in the so-called, you know, pretend and extend. Some of them pretend and down. extend. Pretend that it's worth more than it is until such time as it comes back. And everyone's hoping that rates come down and, and more people come back to work. And extend is, hey, you can pay us off over a longer period of time so you don't have to give us back the keys. Correct. Now, to be fair, many of San Francisco's office towers are financed by huge banks like Wells Fargo, which can afford bigger losses. But they, too, do so-called loan restructurings, a.k.a. pretend and extend. 
Ed Obuchowski and Wendy Ross founded and run the Community Bank of San Francisco. So I asked, is pretend and extend an accurate description? It is accurate, and um, if there's a challenge, I think it's incumbent on both parties to try to work it out. So it's just a question of terminology. I mean, pretend and extend or? Or working collaboratively and taking the long-term view to work out of the loan. Now, their bank makes commercial real estate loans, so is it in trouble? Maybe even headed for collapse, like nearby Silicon Valley Bank and First Republic not so long ago? It's not had a major impact with us. No. It lends modestly, they say, charges a bit more, pays depositors a bit less. But you thank your lucky stars that you're not a bank that put money into fancy downtown real estate. Sometimes small is good. Was that your thinking going in? That small is good and that, that you wouldn't get stuck with uh, properties that might plummet in value? Our core is community banking, if you will, and so it's always going to be the type of lending where we have a loan but also a personal guarantee and with guarantor support we can look at the other assets of the person behind the property if you will and that kind of just goes back to the core of community banking people it's a people business if you will isn't a big problem elsewhere in the country among regional banks that if the value of what's on their books the collateral of the commercial real estate has gone down a lot that they're not going to be able to lend locally. It just has a negative knock-on effect over there because if they're working through challenges there, it's hard to shift even psychologically from workout mode to new business development mode. Or perhaps even survive. So much depends then on whether workers return to their offices, as Jesse Bloud is pretty much demanding three days a week. And of course, whether interest rates come down. Fed Chair Jerome Powell is holding off on rate cuts for now, how worried is he willing to admit he is about commercial loans? Scott Pelley asked him recently on 60 Minutes. We looked at the larger bank's balance sheets and it appears to be a manageable problem. There's some smaller and regional banks that have concentrated exposures in these areas that are challenged. But of course, how can the head of the Fed say there is a crisis or even could be? Okay, you'd like the bottom line, right? On Powell's prognosis, Blout's investment, San Francisco, commercial real estate and its lenders. Well, time will tell has become such a cliche, we can't sign off with it anymore. But let's face it, time will tell until the next real estate cycle, that is. Hope to see you then. Paul Salmon for the PBS NewsHour, back home from San Francisco.